Hi, my name is Justin Etheridge, and I'm from CodeThinked.com. Here today to talk to you about dependency injection with an inject framework. The inject framework is a uh, dependency injection framework for .NET, written by Nate Kohari, which is licensed for free under the Apache License Duo. They recently uh, released version 1.0, so after the screencast, you should go to www.ninject.org and check it out. All right, so today, before we start talking about um, inject, we're going to actually discuss the strategy pattern real quick. Strategy pattern is something that we probably, most of us have probably already used, but uh, I'm just going to go over it real quick so that we can uh, all start on the same page. Here we're going to start off with an interface called iCaffeinated. It's going to have a single method called drink. Um, we're going to move this to a public and we're going to move it to its own file. And then this iCaffeinated variable we're going to use to, let's see, we're going to use it to create a drive type. We're going to have our first one, it's going to be called Diet Coke. We're going to implement that as public, implement members, and then we're going to say mm, Diet Coke. All right, now we're going to go ahead and create another drive type. We're going to call it Mountain Dew. And we're going to also make this public the members and say mm, Mountain Dew. All right, so let's go ahead, I guess, move that to its own file. Let's do the same with Diet Coke. So now we have our iCaffeinated interface and two uh, classes that implement that interface. So now we're just left to um, use that interface. So let's make a class. We we'll call this class programmer. Let's make it public. Let's go ahead and move to our own file. We're going to have a constructor, which is going to take an i caffeinated. Uh, we'll call it drink. And we can uh, introduce a private field here. And then we can do a public method called write code which is just going to write out to the console um, the result of drink dot drink so now we have a programmer that uh, uses our iCaffeinate interface we have two implementations of iCaffeinate interface so here we're just going to say iCaffeinated drink equals new Mountain Dew no. Help file spelled Mountain Dew right. Then we're gonna have our programmer, new programmer. We're gonna pass our drink in. Then we're gonna call programmer dot write code. Compile that, run it, you say mm, Mountain Dew. So now if we want to uh, change this type right here and say that Coke, compile that. You run it, changes to Diet Coke, just to be expected. Now, that is just a quick sample of the strategy pattern. Basically, what you see here is that we're, we're uh, just swapping out the different kinds of Diet Coke, and everything works exactly as we expected. Now, this actually here is really manual dependency injection. Um, we are uh, passing our dependencies into this programmer, but um, you know this is better than having the programmer actually instantiate its dependencies inside of itself, but um, we can use an inject framework, as we're here for today, to do this in a much easier fashion. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a reference to our inject core. Now I've created a whole folder under uh, my project with lib, and what we really need to do right now is just reference an inject core. So once we have our inject core referenced, uh, we're going to say i kernel. Create a kernel equals new standard kernel. You'll see that our standard kernel takes the kernel options and a params i module, or right now we're just going to use the current overload of params i module. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a module. So let's create a type called custom module. We are going to just call this module for now equals new custom module. And here, <coughs> change this to public. 
this is going to inherit from the type standard module. Standard module just has a uh, method called load. So now we have our module. We can change the var. We can pass our module into our kernel. Now I know that you don't know what any of these are quite yet. I'm going to explain them in a second. Um, our kernel in inject is essentially the class that we use to request types from inject for inject to first um, to build for us. Um, and our custom module is essentially what holds our uh, configuration for an inject. So here you'll see down here that we have our load method. In this load method called bind, um, when I call bind, I can say, okay, let's say I want to have a icaffeinated. I'm going to bind that to uh, Diet Coke. And then I'm going to say bind programmer to, oh, to self. Now up here, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to get rid of the uh, iCaffeinated drink. We're going to say uh, kernel dot get. We're going to tell an inject to give me a programmer. Oh. So we're going to have a uh, programmer here. Delete this I guy out. So now we're asking to inject for our uh, programmer type. Compile this. If we run it, you'll see that we have mm, Diet Coke. Everything worked. You can come down here. You can change this to Mountain Dew. Build it again. Run it. Mm, Mountain Dew. You see what's happening here is that we are uh, loading the standard module into our kernel. And our kernel can take multiple modules. And when this module is passed in, the kernel can use uh, any of these bindings that we create in our load method. And here, the first mod the first uh, binding we're doing is we're binding programmer to self. Now, an inject has what's called implicit self binding turned on by default, so we don't actually need this line. We can still run this, and it's still going to work. If we ask for a programmer type, an inject is just going to instantiate um, the, that concrete type and pass it back. This only works um, for non-abstract uh, types. Um, but you can turn um, implicit uh, self-binding off uh, if you want to explicitly uh, state um, every type that can actually be requested out of an inject, which you, you might actually want to do in a larger application. Um, here, uh, you can see that we're actually binding the iCaffeinate interface to the concrete type Mountain Dew. Um, what happens here is now that we have our programmer class, when we request this programmer type from inject, inject goes to the constructor, because as, as you can see here, we're not actually giving uh, the program inject any uh, uh, parameters to pass the to programmer. We're just asking for our programmer type. So an inject goes to our programmer, goes to instantiate it, sees the single constructor, um, and once it sees a single constructor, it sees that there's parameters in it and looks at the parameters and says, "Okay, well I need an eye caffeinated. Um, is there any bindings that fit this uh, type?" It sees here that there is an eye caffeinated type and it binds to Mountain Dew, and so that's what it passes in. Now, let's say if I were to comment this out and we ask it for that programmer, and I run it, now we're going to get an error. Um, basically, it's saying that uh, it couldn't resolve the type that we were asking for. So, now you've seen real quick um, how to use the uh, standard module uh, or implement a custom module on top of the standard module and uh, access the kernel and inject to request types and then you've seen now how to do a uh, self-binding and how to bind a uh, particular interface um, or this can be an abstract class to a concrete type. I hope you enjoyed this screencast and I hope you'll check out uh, part two.